right, everybody, welcome back to another video. This is going to be the last video, or so I hope, of the Age of Exploration, otherwise known as the Age of Discovery. We've learned a lot so far, but this video I want to discuss two very huge key topics that we need to go over. Perhaps the most important out of all of them so far, because it's truly a turning point in history. So we've already covered some of the key explorers like Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, Bartolomeu Diaz, and we've skipped over a bunch more which will be in different review guides and you can Google them and things like that. But again, this is a brief overview. We've covered the Silk Road, we've covered all the technological advances that happened during this time period that allowed travel, worldwide travel, to really happen. So buckle down and let's finish this up. So the first key concept that really revolutionized the world and was and is considered a turning point in world history is the Columbian Exchange. And to be quite honest, there really was not a world history before this. At least none that we could write about because especially for Europeans and even Asians, that was all of the world that they, they knew. All they knew was the Europe area, the Asia area, Russia, which some of it's in Asia, some of it's in Europe, and just there, and just their water routes that they had close by. But nobody actually knew what was here in the United States of America. Nobody knew that this land even existed before um, people started crashing there and uh, essentially going there by accident. Some people reached Canada before Christopher Columbus, but by and large, we're just going to make it simple and say that around the end of the 15th century, people were finally starting to realize that North America and Central America, South America were there and they were viable options to set up colonies. Now, this Columbian Exchange, what is it? The Columbian Exchange refers to the old world and the new world colliding and ultimately crashing. And there's a lot of good things that happen and a lot of bad things. And one of the huge debates in history and something that you can decide for yourself is, is the Columbian Exchange a good thing or is it a bad thing? Is it something that we should praise and try to continue in this worldwide globalism? Or is it something that we should look on with disdain and pretend like it never happened? Well, ultimately that's impossible to do, but the point being... Should we praise it or should we hate it? Should we look on it with disdain or should we look on it with with loving a dearness? If that's not even a word. But the point here being the Columbian Exchange is when the old world, which refers to Europe, Asia, all those places that we've already discussed, and the new world, the unknown entities in North America and Central America specifically, and a little bit of South America, are coming together and pretty much meeting for the first time. And when people meet for the first time, things can either go really good or really bad. So what ends up happening in the Columbian Exchange is Christopher Columbus and other Europeans are going over into the New World and meeting people for the first time and vice versa, along with other explorers. Now, the reason why this is significant is because when people come from the old world into the new, they're going to be bringing stuff with them. And likewise, when people meet from the new world, people from the old world, they're going to be bringing stuff back to the old world with them. So what is it exactly that happens? Well, ultimately, the old world pretty much devastates the new world. And a lot of it is unintentional. It's not like they set about to kill everybody, but they essentially did because of diseases. You see, Europe had already undergone many, many, many diseases like the Black Plague, um, smallpox, all these diseases that were known quantities in Europe and that over time people died from them and thus those who were still alive were essentially immune or had a better immune system to fight off those specific European, Eurasian uh, diseases. But then when those same people go to the new world, 
those Native Americans that are there in Central America, North America, and South America, when these they, they meet these Europeans, they inevitably get some of the diseases that they're carrying with them, and it devastates their communities. Most statistics say anywhere between 80 to 90 percent of the Native American population in Central and North America were completely devastated because of the Columbian Exchange. And again, it's an unintended consequence. It's not like Christopher Columbus and other Europeans were going over to the New World and saying, let's bring our disease pistols and let's go shoot them with our smallpox and bubonic plague. No, they weren't doing that. It's just unintentional contact of meeting people. Even today, if you met somebody from Africa or for somebody from somewhere that you don't know well and you've never been there and your body's not immune to those different things and you don't have the type of medicine that, we, that we've been accustomed to using right now, if you were to meet somebody with a disease, you shake their hands, you might contact that disease. Now, fortunately, we have modern medicine that really helps us and our immune systems seem to be much better, at least from what I can tell. I'm no scientist. But back then, the Native Americans had nothing. The Europeans were just lucky that they already undergone uh, years of different plagues so that their genealogies kind of passed down a good immune system through them. But ultimately, the Native Americans are screwed out of this deal. It is, it is hell on earth for them where all these people are dying. And as a result, you're going to have uh, civilizations like the Incan civilizations and the Mayan civilizations and the Aztec civilizations. A lot of their leaders are going to die which causes other problems. Because when a leader dies, somebody else tries to take over, and then another tribe tries to come, and they try to take over, and then you have a lot of war, so it leads to that. So ultimately, the Colombian exchange for the New World doesn't seem to be that good. But there is some upside to it. <laughs> there is some huge upside to it. And the number one thing that I want to say is pizza. Pizza? Yes, pizza. Without the Colombian exchange, pizza would not have ever been invented. Without the Colombian exchange, horses would have never been on our continent. Without the Colombian exchange, potatoes never would have been in Europe. Without the Colombian exchange, Different types of spices and sugars wouldn't have been able to be used in Indian food like curry, such as the chili peppers. Why? Those were all things that originated in the New World. The New World had an abundance of crops that Europeans had never seen. Europeans had never seen a tomato before. They get to the New World and the story has it that when they got the tomatoes and they brought them back, nobody actually thought that they were edible. And they kind of just used them as household decorations. And then I guess one day somebody decided, hey, I'll take a bite of this. And, oh, it tastes good. And eventually it's the Italians that, that adopt the tomato pretty much as their own and use it almost in all of their food. It's almost like a staple of an Italian diet. And it also leads to pizza. Um, yum, yum, yum. I love pizza. Especially if you're from this region of New Jersey, New York, this area. You absolutely love pizza. Well, it never would have happened without the Colombian exchange. In addition, the stereotype of the Native American riding the horse and galloping along the plains. They never would have even had horses had it not been for the Colombian exchange. Because horses were from Europe and that area. So when they bring horses over, Native Americans are like, wow. They've never seen animals like this before that could actually ride and ride quickly. They've never seen animals that could hold a lot of weight. They've never seen animals that could really revolutionize the way that their society is going. And so this Colombian exchange is an exchange of ideas for sure, but more so an exchange of goods, of crops. And it's the old world and the new world colliding. So that's the Colombian exchange and you got to know it because it's a turning point in history. thing that I need to talk to you guys about is similar to the Colombian exchange, although it kind of builds upon it. 
And that's the triangular trade. And the triangular trade, just like a triangle, is going to be between ultimately three parties. And it's really England that's ruling this and it's the English colonies that are controlling these as well because of the uh, system of mercantilism where essentially a mother country is controlling its colonies and basically just trying to get as much raw materials and goods out of it as it can so that it could consistently make more money. It's all about the mother country, in this case England, getting rich with moolah. So the triangular trade is primarily going to be between England, Africa, and the New World continent, North America, and even Central America. And what it is, is the Americas are going to be sending over towards England through the ocean. They're going to be sending tobacco, sugar, and other raw materials. And England is going to get that stuff. And they're going to use it. They're going to sell it. They're going to produce some raw materials from it. And they're going to send it down to Africa. Now, Africa, in turn, is going to be making rum and other things like that. And they're going to be accepting some of those goods and services from England. And Africa is going to send over slaves towards America. And this is the traditional thought of the triangular trade. Where everybody's getting something and everybody gets a piece of the pie... But make no mistake, England is the one getting the richest off of this. England's the one that's kind of controlling this whole thing. Now, this wouldn't have happened without the Colombian Exchange. Because again, if nobody went over to the, um, to the Americas to begin with, Colombian Exchange wouldn't have happened. So triangular trade, very simply, is a triangle, a trade between three countries. And it doesn't have to be just England, Africa, and America. It could be between anybody. It could take place today as well as it does in many other places where basically if you don't have something that somebody else wants, you get somebody else in the deal that maybe you can give them to something that they want and then that person gives the other person something that they want so that you ultimately get what you want. And I know that might sound crazy to think about and a little confusing because of all the trades and the use and the use and the use and stuff like that, but ultimately just think of it as the Americas are sending over sugar and other raw materials, tobacco is a big one, to England. England takes that stuff, uses it for themselves, sells it to other people, and also makes, raw, uh, makes finished products, goods, from those raw materials. And then they send those things down to Africa. So now Africa is benefiting as well. But what about America? America hasn't received anything yet. England's received something. Africa's received something. Well, then Africa sends slaves over to North America. And it becomes a huge deal because ultimately this is also going to end up becoming known as uh, the slave trade. Not just the triangular trade, but the slave trade. Because this gets associated with more, the high demand of slaves happening in North America to help produce more tobacco, to help produce more cotton and other raw materials. They need slave labor. And so they're going to get that from Africa. And then they're going to be able to grow their cotton and grow their raw materials and then ship it to England. And the cycle's just going to keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. Because that's ultimately, under the system of mercantilism, how England believes it's going to get very, very rich. So that's it for you. That's the Colombian exchange. That's the triangular trade. Huge turning points in history that really would not have happened had it not been for exploration. So I hope you learned something. Go back, subscribe to the channel, look at previous videos, and study up. It's very important to know. Great stuff. Age of Exploration Discovery. See ya.